Welcome to this short video tour of Osprey 2020, a Halbarassi 46 from 2005. Uh, we believe she may be the last 46 to leave the factory in 2005, certainly the last year of production. This is a established and proven blue water cruiser, plenty of accommodation down below and excellent passage times and sea keeping with abilities. Uh, Osprey 2020 has the uh, furling mainsail here. This is electric and can be controlled from the cockpit. We just quickly go up to the triple spreader rig from Selden. The standing rigging on this boat was renewed in 2015. The running rigging was renewed in 2017 in, in parts. There are maybe some lines here that haven't been replaced, but certainly it's not something that is due. Um, she's the cutter rig, you may have noticed. So here we have what's the removable uh, running backstays, which tension against that uh, stay sail when it's in use. Loads of space for access on these side decks. And uh, as we come forward, you see a big wide foredeck here. There, notice the tow rails are very thick, uh, plenty of space uh, for your feet when you're walking up the bow. Uh, first of the two Selden furlers. These are manually controlled from the cockpit. Uh, you can see the stainless steel anchor chain, electric windlass, double bow roller, and place to mount the removable bowsprit. There's also an anchor locker with a shelf to store fenders, uh, etc. Looking back on the boat, she has the teak on the coach roof. Teak's in very good condition. Um, the corking is not, not particularly proud of the deck. The grain is nice and uh, even um, and tight, as we like to say. There's no sign of a lot of scrubbing happening here. I'd say uh, plenty of thickness for the new owners, not a concern. As we walk back down the deck, you can see the granny bars here at the mast, extra security whilst you're sailing, if you do choose to work. Um, she has spent some time in uh, the hotter countries, so she although it's not rigged, she does have the bimini that can uh, shelter the cockpit. Uh, all the hatches have these uh, poppers around them for mosquito nets to uh, allow you to air the boat without letting in the little nasties. On each side, you've got gates for access, port and starboard through the guard wires. There's your gas locker, room for two um, big bottles, shore power inlet, we'll look more at that later. Um, we have powered winches here. Big 64s for the primary um, Genoa sheets coming back here um, to 44s on both sides. These are powered. You'd use those primarily for the main sheet, although when, it's, when you're flying a spinnaker, you may choose to put the sheets there also. Behind the centre cockpit, you have this space back here. Two push pitch seats for sitting out. Um, a Navtech hydraulic backstay for tensioning manually. She has a power generation here with the wind vane. Simpson davits for your dinghy. These are manual and a swim platform with stainless steel board and ladder on the stern. Uh, very simple and easy access. We can uh, get into the cockpit. There is a canvas spray hood, but also there's a canvas surround the in uh, the whole cockpit can be enclosed not when you're sailing when you're sat at anchor maybe in some inclement uh, conditions makes this space very usable in 2013 i believe the boat had an instrument upgrade in parts there's a new aut autopilot installed which was here she also had e125 and e95 chart plotters we'll see soon and a new scanner as you can see, there's the chart plotter underneath the spray hood, beautifully varnished outer chart tables and washboards. Usual suspects up here, wind, depth, speed, and a graphic, which you can uh, program to whatever. These, uh, you've also got speakers for the stereo and 12 volt outlets. Here's the E125, which is the bigger of the two chart plotters on board. Here we are down below in the main saloon of Osprey 2020. She has a mahogany finished uh, interior 
with the armchairs to starboard and this curved settee to port, a huge uh, full width dining table here with bottle storage in the middle. All the hatches in the main saloon are opening. There's also 12 volt vet, uh, fans as well. She's very well suited to hot weather um, sailing. Uh, that's the main bulkhead there with the mast supports. There's van vanity lighting throughout. It's all been upgraded to LED. The armchairs are famously comfortable. Um, there's a custom made glass cabinet in between the two and we have storage behind both of them. They lift forward and there's a small amount of storage below. So plenty of storage on the 46. Uh, there's three cabins in total. As we come forward from the main saloon, we have on the port side a bunk room, which again, storage, vented lockers, storage outboard, uh, two opening sky hatches, and there's the lower bunk there. There's a large hanging locker here, and a further cupboard above. There's also a mirror and small vanity area. There is uh, another cabin here. The V berth has a removable center section to make into a double. The storage above and below in that cupboard at the end is where the motor is for the anchor windlass. A large opening hatch here. Small vanity area to starboard with storage above and below. Starboard side up here is the heads. This is a bright, airy space, uh, lots of space for a shower. We've got a sink, hot and cold mixer, as you'd expect. There is a draining shower grate here, but also you've got a separate shower stall with a curtain. Looking back into the main saloon, you can see there are four very wide and uh, secure steps going up to the uh, cockpit. On the starboard side is the U-shaped galley. This is a sea galley. It's a great location at the bottom of the stairs for passing food in and out. Uh, easy to come off watch, make a cup of tea. Um, there is the fridge, top loading. Uh, a great uh, Force 10 three burner cooker with the grill. You've got a double sink under there. You've got hot and cold mixer. There is filtered drinking water. There's a foot pump for water from the tank as well. More stowage. Opposite on the port side is navigator seat and large forward facing chart table. Behind the navigator seat, I want to draw your attention to the additional fridge freezer. 12 volt switchboard here with the battery monitors, chargers all running nicely. She has uh, heaters throughout. As mentioned before, there's uh, another I Raymarine chart plotter. She has SSB radios, VHF radios, a further GPS uh, readout, and a multi. The backstage has been insulated for the SSB radio. You've got some power outlets there. The uh, shore power powers the two 30 volt outlets, which are situated throughout. The walkthrough to the aft cabin, there's easily six foot of walk of headroom here. A bookcase on the inboard side. More hanging lockers, uh, two on the port side there. And then you have this uh, two plus one arrangement with the berths. Uh, so a sea berth on the starboard side. And as you can see, there's infill cushions. You can actually make it into one big bunk back here if you want to. Again, there's fans opening port lights all around, apart from the aft one there uh, and above. This is uh, on benefits from an ensuite which again has a separate shower stall there. We are looking at down at another uh, marine heads. Both of these heads have holding tanks. Uh, this will drain overboard. There's a sink here, which has um, an overhang around the edge that stops water from swirling up and soaking everything when you're at sea. Here is the uh, shower. Quite a big space there. Underneath these two berths, uh, you will find things like the battery banks and obviously some steering gear there as well. Um, there's a seat in the middle, which is opposite a large mirror as well. This is the engine space on Osprey 2020, uh, dominated by this 100 horsepower Volvo Penta engine. Really readily accessible in here through the two dub double doors. Um, th the full specifications are online. Um, highlights are going to be the 2018 installed Fisher Panda over there. 
She's got a 10 horsepower um, bow thruster up in the bow. Uh, there's a huge battery bank, so I think 940 amp hours of uh, AGM batteries. Stainless steel direct coupling down for the steering, gives great feedback from the rudder. There's one of uh, two drives for the autopilot. This one is mounted in here. The other one's behind um, in the aft cabin, directly onto the steering quadrant. She has a uh, water maker. You just see the little green pump there, high pressure pump. And if I come across the engine room like this, you can see the two uh, membranes installed here. And all, all exhaust uh, over the side, obviously, but this space is also ventilated with a fan. Um, and there are uh, fire extinguishers in here also. Um, Raycor fuel filters as well. And there's also a pump for pumping out fuel from the bottom of the fuel tank. Uh, you can also access the other side of the engine room through the cockpit locker, if you so wish. And that will take you directly on top of the Fisher Panda generator, um, which with the capsule off it is obviously very useful for servicing. This is all uh, sound and heat insulated. Uh, the engine can run very quietly. You can easily have conversations inside while the engine's running. Uh, very good installations on the whole.